I'm going to show you how to make an all natural enzymatic face mask that will improve the texture of your skin as well as balance and protect your skin's barrier. So our face mask is going to be made primarily of rice starch. The rice that we're using is an organic jasmine rice and you're going to want to make sure when you buy your rice that you get an organic that is glyphosate free. You don't want to have any of the toxins that they might add to the grain. You definitely don't want to be using that on your skin. And we are also going to rinse off whatever is on this rice because it could have some allergens and pollutants on the rice before we actually get to cooking it. And I know that some of the stuff that's coming off of there is rice starch. But again, we're not going to want that particular rice starch. We're going to pull it out from inside of the rice as opposed to taking it off the surface because of the allergens and you know things that are inside of the rice that need to be rinsed off. So I'm going to start by rinsing our rice and while I rinse our rice I think I'm going to have Welbina tell you all about the benefits of using rice starch on your skin. Organic rice starch contains essential vitamins, minerals, and amino acids that can benefit the skin. It has soothing and calming properties making it suitable for sensitive or irritated skin. Additionally, the natural compounds in organic rice starch can help absorb excess oil, leaving the skin feeling soft and smooth. Pretty amazing, huh? So we have our rice in the water and I have just rinsed it around. And as you can see, the water has all that starchiness to it, it has that white look to it. And that's great. We just want to rinse it off and um, one good rinse should be sufficient. And then we're just going to strain off that um, that rice so we'll just pour this on and I like to get a get something going here get some action going before I push it in there it helps it all to pour out a little bit better yeah nice work and I've got these lovely gloves so that I don't have to use a spoon and be all appropriate so yeah we, we just do things the easiest way possible <laughs> all right guys so now that we've strained off our rice, we can go ahead and add it to our pot. And I'm going to go ahead, actually I probably want to put the water in there first so it doesn't stick to the bottom. I'm going to add quite a bit of water. Um, I have 800 milliliters here and I'm going to add all 800 milliliters. You can add whatever you need. And this is about a cup of rice. So you can kind of um, do whatever it is for your mixture. So if you don't do a whole cup of rice, you can do a lot less and you can use less water or more and more water. So you can gauge that however you need to. We're gonna pop that rice into the pot and we're gonna start it up and let it boil. We're gonna boil that rice really good with the lid on, okay? And the other ingredient that I'm going to add is mint. And this mint is going to need to go in while the rice is boiling. And mint is an amazing thing to be used topically on the skin. And I'm going to have Welbina tell you all about the benefits of using mint on your skin. Mint contains bioactive compounds such as menthol, menthone, and rosmarinic acid, which have various benefits for the skin. Menthol has cooling and soothing properties, menthone has potential anti-inflammatory effects, and rosmarinic acid may have antioxidant and antimicrobial properties. These compounds can help to calm irritated skin, reduce redness, and provide a refreshing sensation. And I always like to use dried goods as opposed to using um, the natural stuff as fresh pit. Um, your fresh picked herbs are going to have a lot of water content and it's going to be more difficult to get the, the oils from them. When the um, herbs have been dried, all the water content has been pulled from them and the oils are a lot easier to attain. So I always use dried goods and I try to use stuff that you guys can get at a grocery store or somewhere locally so that you can make these recipes at home. You don't have to go out and forge in, a, in another state or another country for some wild, crazy, you know, herbal remedy when a lot of the herbs that we have at home provide 
all of those things. We're talking polyphenols and amino acids and all sorts of um, anti-inflammatory and antioxidative properties that, that plants just naturally have. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this mint. So actually, I'm gonna wanna stir that in a little bit. So I'm gonna stir that mint on into the pot with the rice. And I'm gonna give y'all an overhead shot here so you can see what we're doing. All right, so the water's still really cool and uh, we're just gonna try and get that uh, mint mixed into it. It'll, of course, leach out the oils that are in the mint and everything as the water heats up and it won't quite be sticking to the top as much and it'll just kind of make its way into the rice. But we have our rice and our mint in here. I've been using rice water for years and when I use it, it makes my skin so smooth, my pores so tight. It, it just makes my skin look completely flawless. And I mix this stuff up and I use it every once in a while. And when I use it, I use it like, you know, for three days in a row for as long as it's good. And then I might not use it for a little while and mix some more up and use it again later. But every time I use it, I can see a definitive difference in my skin. And it is because of the enzymes and the proteins that are in the rice. And then when you add the mint to this mixture, it adds a whole nother level of you know, acne fighting benefits and anti-inflammatory benefits and antioxidant benefits that are just amazing. And uh, we are also gonna be adding another ingredient to that, which is rose water. And while this is finishing up, I think I'm gonna have Wellbina tell you all about the benefits of using rose water on the skin. Rose water has anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties due to its bioactive compounds such as flavonoids, tannins, and phenolic acids. These compounds help to soothe and hydrate the skin, reduce redness, and protect against cellular damage. Additionally, rose water can help maintain the skin's pH balance and improve the skin barrier function. Overall, it can contribute to healthy, radiant skin. Be well. I don't think I've ever tried mint with jasmine rice, but from the smell of it, I think it's going to taste quite good and I think I'm gonna to have to try it. So we're just gonna let that boil. I like to stir it every once in a while to make sure that the rice doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan and that it's all just kind of flowing nice and, and smoothly. Got a ways to go on this. And while that boils, I would like to talk to you just a little bit about the mentality behind, you know, using chemical products on our skin or, you know, as pharmaceuticals or, you know, there are a lot of natural remedies out there. And I'm telling you that the natural remedies can be more powerful, more effective and have less side effects than the things that you can get chemically, you know, products that you can buy or even medications that are, you know, made in the form of, of uh, pharmaceuticals. So um, the power of the natural remedies is strong I and mean, we've been using them for thousands of years and we've only been using allopathic medicine a little over a hundred years. So there is something to be said for the history that it goes with the understanding behind using natural remedies. And, um, you know, I do use different products on my skin as well. You know, I don't just use natural products, but I do like to use some natural products that offer me just incredible benefits that I don't find from any other products that you can purchase on the market. And rice water is just one of them. And then I also have another um, great product, which is the poultice. <laughs> I wanna say poultice because that Cajun in me wants to come on out, y'all. But uh, it's a poultice and it's an herbal massage tool that I um, have made and I have a, a video out for that that shows you how to make it. And that also has some amazing um, benefits. And it's one of those things that I like to use because its benefits are something that I can't find anywhere else. So um, let's take a look at this water and see what's going on. All right, so we've got a pretty good boil going on it right now. 
and I don't know if you guys can can see but we have a nice mixture right here and we're waiting for that rice to fluff up just a little bit more just thicken up a little bit more get a little bit fatter and then we'll know that that starch is fully in the water if Wellbina can tell us about the history of using rice starch topically. The use of rice starch in skincare dates back to ancient Asian cultures where it was valued for its soothing and mattifying properties. Traditional practices involved incorporating rice starch into beauty rituals to help maintain healthy, clear skin and achieve a smooth, radiant complexion. All right, so let's take a look and see how things are going because I'm betting we're just about ready to strain this rice off of here. Let's take a look. Yeah, so that, that rice is looking nice and cooked now. And that's where you want it to look is cooked. And you can even go a little overcooked when you're trying to pull the starch out of it. And, uh, you know, you may or may not want to eat it afterwards. You know, you might cook up some jasmine rice and just pull off the starch and mix everything separately if you like. But I feel like this is ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn our water off and we're gonna try to strain this into this, into this flask, which I think is gonna be quite interesting. Let's just go ahead and put our strainer up there. We're gonna do our best to try and get it into the jar. Yeah, well done, Steph. Well done. All right, so. The next thing you want to do is get all that rice in there, okay? Because we're going to kind of push out the, the water, the oils, anything that's still in there. We want to just kind of push it out, you know, strain it into the, into the jug, get it all in there, okay? And you can just set that aside. You might want to try that a little later. We may try that a little later. And now we have this lovely mess that we made here with our mint and rice starch. And look at the color of that, it's lovely. And we are going to pour up a little bit. Now we have quite a bit here and I only have a little bit of the rose water measured up. So I have five milliliters of the rose water. And I think I'm gonna add this to another container. So we're just gonna pour up yeah, we're looking at about 250. I'm gonna pour up 250 milliliters, okay? All right, and then I'm going to add my rice water, the five um, milliliters to the 250. And trust me, that is this is really strong uh, rice water hydrosol. So it's got a very, very, oh gosh, it's got a beautiful, powerful smell to it. And we are going to mix that up lost my little stir stick my little stir stick uh, wasn't prepared for this wasn't prepared for this shot <laughs> so we're gonna stir it all in there together okay and now you can basically cool this down first and then you can place it into little vials I like to use the dropper bottles because you can squirt up, you know, the, the dropper into your hand and it's a liquid. So you want to put it on your face, kind of let it dry and get a little bit um, pasty and then add another layer. I do about three layers of it when I do a mask. And this can also be used as a toner. And so when I use it as a toner, I might just use one, um, one, one, uh, oh my goodness, one layer of it and then um, I might rinse that off before I actually apply makeup. Um, this can be left on overnight and it can be used pretty much however you like. There's not really anything you can do wrong with it. You can't use it too often. And um, if you do have the mixture, you do wanna keep this refrigerated. A lot of places will say you can keep it for about seven days. I personally don't like to keep it past four days. I feel like after four days, it's losing its potency. You might as well just make up a new batch. It's very easy to make. So try to stick with uh, the three to four days, keep it refrigerated um, at all times. And then you can just pour it up into your vials whenever it's cool. And when it's nice and cool, which this one is not, it's hot, but you can cap it when it's cool. 
If you cap it when it's hot, let me show you what will happen. This is what happens when you cap it when it's hot. Can y'all see my caps? Cap when cool. Or you get this bulged, bulbulous <laughs> top. So be sure to wait till your mixture is completely cool before you cap it. So yeah, that's a nice little example. So I'm gonna go ahead and like release the top on this one because uh, I don't want it to end up like this one. And I hope this video helped you guys in some way. Maybe you took something beneficial from it. Please let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends on social media. Be sure and hit that red subscribe button or follow me on whatever platform you're watching me. And um, I wish you all the very best. Be well. If you're interested in staying updated on health-related topics, I recommend subscribing to Good Health Geek. They provide valuable information on well-being, nutrition, and more. Be well.